On this episode of Chicago Beer Pass, Nick and I are drinking some Midwest royalty as we run down the GABF award winners, talk about Midwest Coast, Printer's Row Brewing, and a whole bunch of other stops this week. All that and more on this episode. Here we are, hitting up events, drinking our way through Chicago beer, and trying not to miss a thing. Yeah, because, you know, got a cork popped out, boop, it flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. You know, all you have to do is add some fruit, stir it up, and ride that milkshake wave. Whenever I see him, I gotta take a photo with the most decorated brewer in Chicago, Jonathan Cutler. It'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to, every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Sometimes you want a small beer, but really, you want a big beer. You gotta take in all those big, aromatic hops. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? Waiting in line for a bottle release? You should have never been a fad. The Black IPA is delicious. Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Doesn't. Pass. I'm Brad Chabluski. Brad, what's up, man? I'm Nick White. And we are drinking one of the latest Great American Beer Fest medal award winners. Alarmist does it again, man. I know. This time they've done it for Hazy, and now they do it for Lagers. Yeah, and I want to say they snuck a pail in there. They're from... Fanceless one last year. They're, they're on fire, man. That's wild. Yeah, this is the Midwest Royalty Lager. It's a corn-fed Midwestern bread lager. Uh, five and a half percent, man. Um, brilliant lager. It looks like they put corn in it. Corn, six-roll malt, and good intentions. Good intentions, yeah. How about that? So how about Alarmist, man? Like, a lager metal. Right. A hazy metal and a pale metal. That's a good range. Like, that's pretty nice so i was over there uh this past week for yeah and i was glad to see this still on tap and they still had four packs in the fridge so i had to i had to get a four pack for the show yeah and then um we take for granted like we're kind of spoiled with all these breweries but then there's a range of breweries we always talk about that and then now we're looking at it like there's a ton of breweries that won awards around here man i think if i got this right man 15 medals this yeah. year? We're going to get into the metal. Should we get into it now? Well, let's, no, no, no. let's, let's save it for a minute. Okay. okay. All right. But, yeah. but what do you think? I'm liking this mm. beer from Alarmus, and I think they've kind of pivoted a little bit to a little more easy drinking beers over there. I like beers that I don't have to drink about. I drink about <laughs> <laughs> or think about. Okay. Um, you take a sip. You have no complaints. You take another sip. Yeah. You know, simple, clean, old man beers. I'm in. That's us now. That's this show? this is the old man <laughs> beer podcast, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna sip on these as we talk about our last uh, week or so mm-hmm. in drinking, and and we're gonna go over these GABF medals and all the ones we uh, breweries we should be checking out. Right on. Uh, so there was Alarmist, and then I made it over to Sox Park and hit up this craft cave that Nick's always the, going on and on about. You made the trek to guarantee you rate field, huh? Right. <laughs> how, did you, how, how was it, man? How'd you, how'd you get there? One, we drove, and that's a mess. <sighs> yeah, so we didn't really know where to park, and then some. Did you park in the parking lot? What are you talking about? Yeah, we didn't. We, <laughs> we, uh, I kept looping us around. There's arrows, and the arrows don't go to yeah. where they're supposed to. Finally, we just hit a side street, and somebody's selling permits, and we're like, "All right." I, I hope this works. I've, yeah. I've, I've, <laughs> I've been there. I've been in that position where I'm like some random dude, and the permits kind of balled up a little bit, and I'm like, "Oh, these were like clean." Oh, okay. Uh, so you're doing way better than what yeah, I've done. I, and we were like, I, I bought crumpled up permits at this we were place. Like one block from the train, so super easy walk. And then they were like, "Oh yeah, permits, and you need beer, you need juice boxes, you need <laughs> soda." They're it's selling like, fucking um, cider. They're selling um, seltzers. Yeah, just all, on the street. All kinds of shit. Yeah. It's like it's like a farmer's market from the train to the park. Yeah. I'm like... But we just got our permit, and we're like, all right, we'll hope to this car is here when we come back. And it was. It was. There you go. So See? It, worked it all out. works yeah. out. The universe has a plan, right? You know? <laughs> uh, so that was my first time at the, the stadium over there. Yeah. And it's, it, there's a lot to, like, take in because there's a, there's a lot of food, and then once you get in... I knew there was a lot of beer options, and that almost paralyzed me going into it. Yeah, 
because if you in comparison, if you go to Wrigley, you know, well, it's a bud house, right? So there are some exceptions to that. Like, you know, they have an old style tap, but mostly it's bud everywhere. Yeah. And, you know, you might have a half acre, you might have a virtue cider, but mostly just a bud portfolio. Right. But down there, they don't have a main sponsor. Like uh, Miller was a main sponsor. They pulled out. So a partial sponsorship is split between like Modelo and Rev and Goose. And then there's a ton of all these small craft offerings. Right. So it's totally different. But the first thing I saw was the golden ale from Goose, and I was like, yeah. "All right, that that works out well. You know, kick things off, get the good photo. There you and go. Easy drinking, Goose golden ale. So we did that. Uh, and then at one point we made our way to the craft cave, which is very confusing to get to. We were in the hundred level. Right. So you have to walk down Goose Island. And enter there. So basically, right. in the out, you're in the outfield. But there's no signs that tell oh, you to do this. That is true. Yeah. And so <laughs> we were walking. We almost walked out of the because we're like, oh, we think you can because you can go around and down and into it, but it's like blocked off now. Always going through Goose. So the Goose Island is in the outfield. You walk down the island. You right. know that lovely. Uh, Water. Yeah, that's way. <laughs> that lovely, in my mind, that, that lovely, hor- that lovely horizontal pond. In my mind, it was way bigger. It's like someone turned the hose on and it's, it's running down their railing. I'm like, you guys, you guys <laughs> put this 50 foot goose out here, which I love. But then the actual island is no bigger than like the slit on the table we're recording. It's yeah. it's probably five inches deep, and just but wide. Blue lit water. <sighs> Not the best. Not my favorite feature. But the, oh, but you walk down Goose Island to get to the craft cave. Yeah, and then my thought is you're basically in like a kind of like, uh, not that dugout area, but that backfield, which those seem like kind of expensive seats or standing seats or like hangout seats. Um, yeah, like so like the, the, uh, where the pitchers are, where, right. the bullpen. And they just bullpen. let you walk down there, and no one's really like you can stand there for a minute. I don't think anyone's going to like stop you. They're not like hurry up, get through so weird that they're just letting you like walk through that <laughs> i guess i would be annoyed if i had to see that oh, it's a lot like, to take in taking like messing with my vibe down here yeah and then well, the goose island seats are a little bigger right oh, they're bigger yeah. than the regular seats and then they got standing room only um but yeah if you're on the first floor of the goose island yeah you can just stand right Basically, right behind the outfield wall and watch the game. Right. Until someone tells you to move. Right. So, yeah, we stood there for a couple of pictures. But, yeah, inside the craft cave, what, it's six coolers broken up by different styles of beer. And so, luckily, there wasn't a lot of people in this craft cave thing. I don't know if people don't know about it or because it's pretty big and there's a lot of beer in there. So, yeah. A lot of people get it and leave right away. Uh, we got some. Uh, beer for ball game from Off Color. So that's a uh, cream ale. Yeah, and Della, which you know oh, they won. Yeah, that. shout out to Old Irving. Yeah. Uh, but there, there's just a lot of stuff. I don't know. Yeah, man, they say over 70, uh, 70 breweries represented. So there's a craft cave on one hundred level, and there's a craft on the five hundred level. Now, did you make it to? Uh, well, there's. Did you make it to Rev Social Club? I didn't, but Maeve did. Uh, we walked around the whole thing, and I missed how you get up there. Yeah. And, and she went back at one point and went up there, but uh, she said there was nothing really up there. Okay. And they, you couldn't. Yeah, I wanted to see if there was other beer or food or what was up there, but never made it back there. Yeah. Um, sometimes there's 18th Street up there. Okay. Um, and a few other brands. But it's you can surprising. order. You can order beer from the app. Because they don't have people walking around in the stand. Oh, they don't have vendors, yeah. But you, so you can order any beer, right? And they just deliver it to you for whatever that premium is. Yeah. Now, I've, I've never done that, but that is an option. Right. The ballpark app. And so we were, we were sitting uh, right where they, like, they were often throwing the balls into the sta- stadium. Or okay. We were like right there in the 100 level. Yeah. And so people were ordering Incredible. beers from those people all the time. They seemed like hardcore fans that don't leave those seats. <laughs> yeah. It's a busy place. I, my favorite part when I'm at that place is, uh, you know, sit down, find your seat, you know, take in an inning, maybe two, 
and then just kind of cruise this thing because there's so much. It's so busy. Right. There's so much stuff to do. I mean, different, different beers at different stations, different cocktails at different stations, statues and all this kind of shit. Yeah, so, so I like to cruise. I like to cruise it all. Didn't even get into the cocktails. It was, it was busy. It was a Saturday game, uh, Red Sox versus White Sox. So it was a lot of people there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, cheers to Revolution because, um, yeah, when – like I was on the 500 level, so there's no there's no service of any kind. I gotta go stand in line and get a beer. But on the TV, I noticed that behind home plate, Revolution had their uh, ad. They had the Revolution logo behind home plate. Okay. And usually they don't do that. Usually it's like Goose Island, and it says Chicago's beer in big dumb letters. Um, but for this series, I think it's because they sell beer in Boston, and I think Josh D's from Boston that they had all weekend long. They debuted this Revolution sign, so that's the first time since I've been watching all season that I've seen the Revolution behind there. Wow, that's so cool. that's okay. pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, but they lost that day. They did. I think they lost two out of three to Boston. Yeah. Still in first place, but yeah, uh, lost a battle of the Sox. That was rough. They what? It was like seven. Oh yeah, it was rough. seven nothing. Then they came back and tied it up at seven, and I think lost seven. I think they lost like nine to eight or some shit like that. Yeah, we like left. I think after, or we went and got to the craft cave after that seven inning thing, and we're like, this is over. Like, yeah, you gotta give up seven, and then we came back. I, it was like an hour later, and there was only one inning. We're like, what the hell? I <laughs> still problem with a lot of runs. So they score seven runs. It's in the fourth inning, and yeah, the game's been on for like. An hour, ten minutes. Yeah. And you're like, shit, we still got a whole half a game left. <laughs> so. Yeah. But that was a, that was a good stop. Uh, that was like uh, Alarmist and Sox were pretty much my only like kind of beer stops this past week. So, what about you? Right on. Um, what did I do this week? Uh, back at Half Acre. So picked up uh, On and On Part 2. Came out. Okay. Yeah. We were concerned. Yeah, the president said it was a go. The mayor said it might not be a go. Yeah, this mayor sounds like he's full of shit. So I think, uh, you know, the president had that one right. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. Um, you know, they had a going away sale, a garage sale at uh, Lincoln. So I popped in there and grabbed a few things. So right. uh, so that's it for Lincoln, man. I think it's over, it's right? Like in a, Time for Hot Butcher. Time for Hot Butcher to go in there. Um, and I want to backtrack, man, because last week we talked about all those Evanston breweries. You know, it started my Evanston hunt, and I didn't go to it because it wasn't open yet. There's another brewery opening in Evanston yeah. called a Double Clutch. Okay. So it's kind of Double Clutch, kind of named after, like, I don't know, like what you do to a car or something. It's got uh, a car theme. Yeah. Other pictures have, like, old classic cars out in front. Um, so I guess that would be the fourth brewery in yeah. Evanston. I didn't mention that. So I drove up there because, you know, they had the hours up. Mm-hmm. But then you get there, and then there's permission in the window, and they're not open yet. But... Okay. Um, Oh, but what I do this week? Oh, I went bike riding uh, down to uh, Forbidden Route. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Not the, not the new one at Band of Bohemia. Is no. That Is that a go yet? I don't know. Um, no, I went to the original one. So past, uh, past Division Do Fest, Do Division, passed that up, uh, went down to Forbidden Route, um, and they got sidewalk seating, man. They got like five seats outside. Nice. I grabbed an IPA and I grabbed uh, the Sparkling Rose. Okay. On the sidewalk. One? Yeah. Just like a proper end of summer on the sidewalk Chicago Ave beverage. Nice. It's pretty as hell, too. The way it sits in the glass, that dark red, like mm-hmm. really dark, fun, kind of burgundy hue. Cool. Um, so I did that. And then I made it down to uh, Midwest Coast for the first time probably since me and you've been there. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So Midwest Coast was doing their second anniversary party. Oh, it's been two years already. Yeah. Um, I should have took pics, but nothing really caught my attention. It was weird. Because I went for the Oktoberfest, and I'm like, well, I, is it coming in a stein? They were like, no. So then I just got sad and just didn't take any pictures. How do you come out with an Oktoberfest and not have a stein for it? I don't know. Hmm. But they were partying in their, uh, they got a backyard space. Yeah. And they had a one-man band. Um, you know, your classic, yeah, your classic Oktoberfest party. You know, okay. lead, you know Lederhosen. Uh, what do you call the St. Pauli's girl outfit? Whatever that is, you yeah. see a lot of that, you know, bags. Um, they get a lot of uh, runners and a lot of cyclists and a lot of dogs at that place. Just dogs come in. Just themselves. dogs. Oh, because there's a dog ice cream machine. So, yeah, so humans have no ice cream machines. Dogs have a soft serve ice cream machine just for dogs. 
and it's like a German food truck. This I'm like, right on. Um, oh, Chicago Beer Pass stickers on the uh, cooler. That was nice, cool. Yeah. I saw that. I probably should have took a picture of that. Um, there was something else. Oh, they had a collab. I didn't get the Oktoberfest. I got the collab with Finch. Okay. So Finch and Midwest, Midwest Coast. Coast, they have a cherry lager collaboration. Huh. Yeah. Any good? It was quite nice. So it's a lager all the way up to the end, and then it's got this nice little just splash of cherry. Nothing heavy at all. Just very faint, like very a, easy. Not like a barrel aged like Death by Cherry. It's like a, a no. fruited. Like, just kind of like a fruited lager. Okay. Yeah, just a nice cherry, 5% cherry lager. Um, I tried the Oktoberfest, but the cherry lager, I would go back. I would go back for that. Yeah, but cheers to them, man. They're going on two years. Nice. Um, Did you hit up any of the other 10 breweries? You know, I thought about going to on tour, and um, then I just didn't. You know, I'm like, you know what? Oh, I ended up at a distillery. I went to Ryan Hall, oh, the fucking okay. distillery, okay. and um, Apple Brandy on the sidewalk or on the sidewalk seating. Not like you know, okay. like I've a, never gone to Ryan Hall. Like it has weird hours. It's never so. fucking open. That's why you never go. Yeah. yeah. Um, just Apple Brandy on the sidewalk, and by that time, I'm like, I should probably get home before it gets dark. So you're like rosé, cherry. <laughs> <laughs> Apple, brandy, Ooh, man. getting through all the, all the flavors. I got my 10 miles, and um, yeah, it just kind of whistled all the way back north. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun, though, man. It was fun. I haven't been down there, like, those two places. Like, I haven't been to Forbidden Roo since we went, yeah. and I haven't been to uh, Midwest Coast either. So okay. I think that was my romp, man. That's pretty good. That's a good little, good little track. Check these photos, man. I always take photos so I don't forget, man. I think that was all I did, though. Okay. Man, all right. Sounds like a pretty solid last week or so. Um, and then last week when we were recording this episode, we wrapped up, and then I was checking Twitter, and GABF awards were going down. Like We could have recapped them live if we would have saw this. But did you, did you know? I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know until you said something. Yeah, so I didn't know, and then I was trying to scroll through things. I was... I, put on the youtube feed and it was like ending and i was like oh well i'm not gonna scroll through this i'll just get the recap from <clears throat> someone like uh porch drinking or something like that yeah how cool is it that we happen to be drinking the distill that day yeah i was like the breast set this up because uh, that was they, that one didn't win the deadhead yeah because i was the the locale one yeah. but that the another one in that series one yeah Oh, we got the list right here, man. Uh, so, yeah, let's run down at least the Chicago beers or Illinois breweries that won here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Haze of the Dead is the Distill one. So, Distill won twice. Okay. Uh, they took a... the fuck is this? Oh, they took a bronze and a Juicy Hazy or Imperial Pale IPA. Okay. They took a bronze uh, for Haze of the Dead, and then they took a gold for Tour Bus. Now, both Haze of the Dead and Tour Bus are in that Deadhead IPA series. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. So, I guess we can start there with uh, Distill took home two medals and Pollyanna took home two medals. That's funny because, yeah, we were talking about Distill and being uh, this, like, craft beer, I don't know, uh, sought-after thing for all their, like, barrel-aged oh, for and this fruited sour. St. Dakara. Yeah. For yeah. For a while there. And then they sort of fell off the map, and here they are picking up two awards. Yeah. Good for them, man. I know uh, Dos Fedonia cleans up at uh, Fobab. You talked about St. Dakara. Operation Overload was one of the first big IPAs I got into. Yeah. And here they are, like you said, fucking eight years later, out of nowhere with this Deadhead IPA series, and they take home two medals. Two medals in the Juicy or Hazy category, which Chicago is owning yeah. the last three That's years. Great. Chicago's medaled all three years of this category. Um, Pollyanna got on the board twice. Uh, Party Penguin. And other strong beer took a bronze, and then Roselle Red Vienna style lager took a gold. Okay, and then they won last year for their light lager, right? Uh, light, light thinking. Light thinking. Light yeah. thinking. We had we had that right after they uh, won that. So yeah. yeah. So let's go. Should we go through the rest of them? Yeah. Lay it down. We're under attack. Let's What's going on? Oh, all right. Cicada, cicada, they're coming for us out here. <laughs> we're 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 uh, live outside again. For that's sorry for the pause there. Um, let's run them down, man. Uh, Tribes and Mokina, American Belgo style IPA okay. took a silver. 
Uh, we already mentioned Alarmus with the Midwest royalty. Goose Island, Matilda. Brett, Matilda one. Bronze in the bread tier category. So that's their first one. And remember, the, the running joke on Goose was like, everyone knows what BCS tastes like, so they'll probably never win again at JBL. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they got a gold, or sorry, they got a bronze really? for Matilda. Wow, that's pretty, that's pretty nice. Like Matilda, <clears throat> it's one of those beers I enjoy quite a bit, but I know it gets me in trouble because... It's 7%. It's, yeah. You know? And then you just kind of like crush them. Then you're like, oh shit. I think they deserve a lot of credit for being, you know, a crew that before anybody else had it on their radar was like really into pairing beer with food. So they had that elegant chalice that they pour Matilda in. Yeah. One of the first beers I really fell in love with was like an old Matilda. You know how Matilda's got its traditional, uh, you know, logo, yeah. right? But then this one, you know how the older beers have that uh, the writing, the yeah, the black scripture, the black and white script. Okay. Yeah, and I had one of those. And you sit on a Matilda for three three years, man, and yeah. Matilda's fucking fantastic. Just big, fucking ripe banana, just great. And for so long in Chicago, you could find five dollar Matilda pours. Yeah. And it was just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so true, man. A uh, vocal jam from Short Fuse mm. uh, took a silver in the experimental beer category. So cheers to them. Okay. Will County Brewing in Shorewood, Illinois. I don't know that. Now, Will County is... I don't is, know where Shorewood is. Me either. I know Will County is where Cook County stops to the south, yeah. and then Will County begins. Right. But I don't know where Shorewood is. Uh, fruit Wheat Beer, Bam Bam Loves Pebbles, okay. is your is your uh, gold medalist there. Damn. Huh. Tangled Roots out in Ottawa. They took a bronze in the same category for Sunkiss Blonde. Okay. I've heard of Tangled Roots. I've had them at like the Naperville Ale Fest. I couldn't right. tell you much about them though. No. Yeah. Uh, Short Fuse again. So, man, Distill, Pollyanna, and Short Fuse took home a Two. pair of medals. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Short Fuse again in the uh, Fruited American Sour category with a silver. That's, gr that's pretty awesome for Short Fuse. I feel like uh, a lot of beer people, there's like a love hate with short fuse like yeah you know we were on location there once for like a video like a cbg video thing and you know their story was cool because one of those guys the guys who's brewing there is from goose he's part of the flock yeah and you know they have this massive space and it's super close to the airport there's a lot about that st space that makes sense but yeah i think some of their stuff is cool and some of their stuff i just wasn't into yeah. but they have a big following probably because you could party your ass off there and bring like as many people as you want Right, and it's not far from the Outlet Mall. And that's where the Chicago Dogs play, too, right over there. So you can kind of go to it either before or after a game or before or after the mall. So Yeah. So good for them, man. Um, so hopped out in Huntley. Yeah, I know. You've been there. I saw that <laughs> pop up, and I was like, really? Wow. So hopped. So I think they're like, you know, I don't know, something about the building used to house, like, a sewing company or something like that or – Tropical Hurt Locker is a uh, fruited American sour. So, Wait, so... <laughs> Wait, did Illinois get gold, silver, and bronze in this fruited... Wait, I just lied to you. I'm sorry. Oh. That's, get my eyes checked, man. Uh, that, that was a German alt beer. Oh, German alt so beer. Hop. So Hop was a German alt beer. Okay. Um, and then we talk about uh, Della from Old Irving. Yeah. That's a German style Kolsch. Now, last year... They surprised everyone and took like uh, they took a medal in the uh, hazy for Beezer. Yeah, so cheers to them, man. Super underrated. Uh, German style Kolsch again for Crystal Lake. Okay. So it looks like Chicago took the silver and the bronze in the German style Kolsch category. That's weird. Like we clean up in these hazy beers and then we're like, you know what? We're gonna do Kolsches. How about Let's that? Go. So bronze and the gold in fruit wheat beer. And then the silver and the, yeah, the silver and the bronze and Kolsch. Nice. So, so who took home, is it, can you click on that? Who took home gold in? In both of those? In, in the, in the Kolsch. We can find out. This is just a screenshot. We oh, can find, okay. we can find out though. That's a good, I, I want to know too. We talked about Distill. They won twice, both for Hazy's. Uh, Triptych. Yeah. Down in Savoy. Uh, oh shit. Juicy or Hazy bronze. Which one? Uh, dank meme. Dank meme. Dank. Oh yeah, I think I, I think I had dank meme. 
Did yeah. we have it on the show? We had a, I know we had a triptych collab with microphone on the show. Yeah, that's still in the fridge. And we were a uh, monster beer, Brad. This shit's like twelve. Wait, was it listed? Was that the one that they didn't even list it? It was just a triple IPA. Listed. It was too big for us. We were yeah. We were weak sauce on that one. Dude, we just couldn't do it. I still have them in the fridge because I'm like, I just need someone. Oh, fuck, I what doing. <laughs> I just need someone to show up that wants to like party and be like, here's a twelve percent. Yeah. For you. Last but not least. Mickey Finn's, Libertyville. Whoa. Hello. Uh, Dark and Down is a rye beer. They took home the silver. All right. That was fun. Nice. You know, Mickey Finn's up in Libertyville. <laughs> you know, I used to, uh, oh, I still work in Lake Forest, but we just never go now because we're, we're at home. But, you know, Libertyville, downtown Libertyville is a romp for lunch. It's like not far away. It's like a 10 minute ride. Yeah. So, you know, I've been to Mickey Finn's quite a bit in my day. You know, they had a beer called, um, Pineapple Express, the triple IPA. Uh, that was always pretty good. And they were like, they're like the oldest brewery in town. They're not far from your buddies at Wild Onion. And they're not far from Wild Onion. That's oh, always an F. You just want to go north after a little romp in Lake Forest. You hit up uh, Mickey Finn's and you go up to Barrington for Wild Onion. Okay. Yeah. So cheers to them, man. Uh, Mickey, Mickey Finn's. Yeah. So who won then gold for this Cole Spear? That's kind of mm. my thought. Is it going to be... A macro win, or is it going to be? Uh, I feel like it's probably someone most of us have heard of, or w- familiar with at least. German style Kolsch. We're going to pull up the style here. Uh, let's get to the bottom of this, Brad. They're spelling Kolsch C O E L C H. They're so they're adding an the E there. Ah, interesting. Okay. Cicadas are coming back out. All right, um, we talked about the bronze, that was Crystal Lake. The silver was Old Irving. The gold is a crew called Chuckanut Brewery. Oh, so not not someone kind of big. Chuckanut Brewery with a beer called Sa- South Nut. <laughs> Let's find out where Chuckanut Brewery is, man. In Chuckanut. Chuckanut County. I feel like it's going to be a... a a town. No. Uh, Bellingham, Washington. Washington. Okay. Yeah. So. Interesting. All right. Good for them. Yeah, man. There's your GABF, man. Chicago. Um, well, Short Fuse won. You know, they split up the uh, small brewer of the year into like maybe three or four categories. Right. And Short Fuse won last year? They won They won this year. This year. Oh, yeah. Shit. For like barrels under uh, under a thousand barrels, I think. Ooh. Who does Short Fuse know in the GABF like judging committee over there? Yeah. So <laughs> they, won, they won uh, 16 medals. 16 medals for beers in Illinois. And then if you count the Short Fuse win for Small Brewer of the Year. 17 medals. Not bad. Shit. Nice. Good for them. Cool. Nice. Well, any other news or events coming up that we need to tell people about? Um, we got an Oktoberfest happening over at Skokie. Uh, yes. At, Ske- at Sketchbook. Right on. They will be Steinholding. People will be in Lederhosen. Uh, probably soft pretzels. <laughs> Maybe hard pretzels. The huge. Yeah. Um, cheers to the aforementioned Old Irving. They're celebrating their fifth anniversary with a Hoptober anniversary. Oh, yeah. We're drinking out of the Old Irving. Oh, yeah. Glasses. We sure are. Yeah. So cheers to them. And also, before we get out of here, I wanted to mention uh, Printer's Row Brewing. That, oh. was, that was a stop this week. And Printer's Row is a neighborhood like downtown, right? Like right. kind of right by Columbia College. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like you know, 800 South, right before you hit Roosevelt. Yeah. Also, but the Printer's Row Brewing is up in uh, Portage Park. Okay. So like northwest of here, and um. Well, that's confusing. It is a little bit. You can thank Ravinia and 18th Street for that, right? Because they got locations and spots that are not 18th or Ravinia. <laughs> But uh, so now everyone's doing it. Uh, but apparently, um, this crew took over like this Mexican food stand right at the corner, right on uh, Milwaukee there, just past like the old Fishman's. Okay. Oh, uh, but anyway, you know, uh, fell in there for a pint, and um, they got a flagship beer called 81 West, and they named it after the uh, 
it's an IPA. They yeah. named it after the bus. So the uh, the Irving bus <laughs> is called eight. It's bus number eighty one. So they named That's it after that. that. That's a good idea. And um, you know, they were brewing at uh, Lake Effect. Okay. But you know, so they got their shit and they get found their place. And I'm like, so, and he's like, yeah. And before that, we were brewing at a, uh, we were brewing at an aquarium store. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, well, one of the owners of uh, Printers Row Brewing is like, he own, also owns an aquarium store. So they carved out a space in the... That's super illegal. <laughs> they carved out a place in the aquarium store to brew until they got their own place. That's some illegal shit there. That oh, the aquarium? I don't know. I don't, have, I don't have an aquarium. I don't think you could do that. Like, you're not zoned to, like, was that beer hitting market? Were you just practicing in there? They were definitely brewing there. If you were just brewing it for your con- home consumption, maybe. Well, maybe maybe there was a brewery set up in the aquarium store. Had to be, right? Yeah, but were they zoned? To... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the liquor rule. I don't know what the laws are on brewing near aquariums. <laughs> I don't. I have no. I, I have no idea. Um, Shit. Okay. But I'm like, that's that's something you won't forget. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean aquariums? He's like, oh, one of the guys owns an aquarium store. I'm like, that's funny as hell. How many aquariums? There's only like mm-hmm. one. I know of like the Old Town Aquarium, and then there's one. There's another location of it on Irving Park here. I bought an aquarium once, like I don't know, in the early 2000s, yeah. and it was like a going away gift. I was leaving. I was leaving Texas, and I, I bought it as a gift for my bestest friend. That's the only time I bought an aquarium feels like you have an aquarium and a waterbed. They go together, right? Waterbed, man. Those you ever the, had a waterbed? My <laughs> parents did growing up. <laughs> and we had an aquarium, so that's what makes <laughs> I had a waterbed once. and um, That was the first time I drank a Grolsch because the guy who was selling it to me, you know, he helped set it up. And his son played acoustic guitar, and they were uh, just cracking open Grolsch with the swing top all night. And, you know. We party with them and they they fill up your water bed. <laughs> they help fill up my water bed. <laughs> it seems like such a weird thing, yeah. But I feel like aquariums and water beds go together. Oh man, a temperature control on a water bed though is it's pretty nice in the summer. Uh, you I know? guess in the winter probably too. Oh, in the winter too. Yeah. So, oh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but cheers to them, man, because I really like their IPA, man. Eighty-one West IPA, and I think. When you get that far north, man, it's Lake Effect and shit. And these guys, and I think that's about it before you hit the burbs. Uh, but there's another, Lake Effect is the new Lake Effect in Jefferson Park. Right. And then there's another one in Jefferson Park. Another, another brewery that's already open and serving. So there is another spot. This one, Printer's Row. Is that Printer's Row? Oh, okay. uh, yeah. Oh, it, that's in Jefferson Park. Well, it's in Portage Park, which is next to Jeff Park. No, there's another brewery in Jefferson in Park. In Jeff Park? Yeah. I don't know that one. Like on a corner. <laughs> we're not giving the, we're not giving the people much here, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we'll have to go wander the streets of Jefferson Park and see what's up. Cool. Yeah, I wanted to mention that place, man, because that was that was on the romp this week. Nice. All right, and then one miss that we totally uh, forgot about was Oktoberfest happening in Lincoln Square. Oh yeah, like. Probably a, like a nice proper German right, Oktoberfest. Right, so they do uh, Mayfest and they do Oktoberfest, which Mayfest happens in April and Oktoberfest happens in September. And you can drink your little Stein, plastic Stein of whatever. I, I forget the. See, that's what I'm saying, man. Like, even if it's plastic, give me the Stein. You know, at uh, Midwest Coast, it was all plastic because they were partying in their patio yeah. or whatever. But you I'm like, have, they should have had the fake. Plastic Stein. Just give me the Stein. It's a party, man. I want a Stein. Although. I wouldn't have tried the Cherry Lager, though, if they gave me a Stein. So. The nicest Stein we have is that Argus Stein. Man, that motherfucker is sweet, ain't it? That's a nice Stein. You know, I shattered my uh, my pour-over coffee uh, carafe. Oh, yeah. And I just used the Argus Stein <laughs> <laughs> with the V60 over it. <laughs> it is literally the best Stein I have. A second best, I'd probably say, is the Metro one. Dude, the Metro ones, I don't have, like, a big Metro one. I just got that 30, this 32. Yeah, I got the, well, I, we got, I got the little old ones, so. That's the one I got. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think they have a big one, like the Argus. Uh-huh. Yeah, like the 64. Yeah. But, 
No, I mean, there's nothing like drinking out of a stein. Yeah. Nothing. Although our wooden ones we used on a reel <laughs> last week were pretty good. That reel went fucking nuts. <laughs> that reel went nuts, man. That was great. All right. So I think that's going to do it for this week's episode of Chicago Beer Pass. Nick, where can people find you? Get in touch when we're not here. Right on, man. I'm on Twitter, at Nicosio. And I'm on Twitter at BRAD, Chicago Beer Pass. Chicago Beer Pass Twitter, Instagram, the website, chicagobeerpass.com. All the episodes are posted there. And we'll be back uh, soon with another episode. And we might have to go inside at that point. Yeah, it'll fuck around and be 50 degrees out here. Or we do a, we can do a campfire one. I got, I got, I got a hoodie. Yeah, we do a campfire episode. Wear my socks hoodie, man. <laughs> Take care. Cheers.